All right. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for all of our presenters and panelists coming today. I really appreciate this. So Tim, if you'd like to start, we'll do introductions that way. Sure. Um, so are, are we just going to go around and introduce ourselves first? We are. OK. My name is Tim. Um, I go by they, them pronouns. Um, I am currently a senior um, at the State University of New York at Fredonia. Um, and I am a ethnic and gender studies major um, with a minor in psychology and social work. So that's, that's me. I'll pass it on to Jace. Hi, my name is Jace. I use he, him pronouns. I'm currently a sophomore at SUNY Fredonia and I am a theater arts major with a minor in arts administration. And I'll pass it off to Jessica. Hi, my name is Jessica. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I got my undergraduate at UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina in public policy, but I'm here in New York State getting my PhD in social work. At UB, correct? Yeah, sorry, UB. No problem. I am Giselle, also known as Brad. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, any pronouns humanly possible. Um, I go to Fredonia as well. I am a psych major and a self-designed LGBTQ studies major. So there's that. I'm also a drag queen. So that's why I look like this. This is not my normal daily get up. We love to see it. All right, so I just wanna thank you all again for coming. So basically how we're gonna format this panel is that we're gonna let each of our panelists tell you their experience with finding a college, being a queer person at college, finding if that was something they were looking to find an LGBTQ plus safe space before going to college or found one during college. They're all gonna have their own personal stories. Uh, I will say I am a little biased when putting this panel together. I went to both UB and Fredonia, so I'm a proud alumni. So that just kind of happened like that. But we are aware that there are many colleges that are LGBTQ friendly. These two happen to be locally in Western New York, which is where you are all from. And so that is the perspective we're going to be getting today. So which one of our panelists would like to go first? I'll go first. Okay, yay! <laughs> um, so like I said, um, I'm a senior here at uh, SUNY Fredonia. Um, now my my story is a little bit different uh, than probably from Jace, Giselle, um, and Jess's. Um, so I didn't come out um, when I came out. Um, I necessarily wasn't looking uh, looking to go to college. Um, I was kicked out of my home at seventeen. Um, I was living out of my car, just work, going to school or going to work every day, and then you know going back to my car, um, and then. SUNY Fredonia happened to be the closest university. Um, so I drove out here, um, applied, went through the whole process, gave them a fake address. I recommend you don't do that. Um, lived in my car for the first year that I was here at Fredonia. Um, but during that time, you know, like I said, I had just come out. So I was really just finding myself. So um, when I was in high school, you know, in uh, your, uh, a uh, school counselor is like advising you on where to go to college, what schools to apply to, what to look for. That necessarily wasn't me. I wasn't really looking for, you know, a university that was LGBT friendly. Um, I didn't even know that Fredonia, once I got here, was LGBT friendly um, until I actually experienced part of the community um, that uh, was involved in that, including Brad who I've known since I, since we started here together. Um, I do have um, a little presentation um, that I have been working on. Um, so like I said, I'm a senior. So part of my um, capstone project, which is like a final project when you're a senior, um, is to try and get SUNY Fredonia listed on what is a national server called um, Campus Pride Index. Um, it's a really great opportunity. Um, so I'm just going to show you that presentation. It's like five minutes. Um, and then if we have any questions, you can ask that at the end, like after everybody's gone. Okay. 
So faith, I believe I have sharing abilities, yes. You sure should. If not, uh, I can fix that. Uh, it says host disabled. Uh-oh, hold on. Try it now. Hey, it's working. Okay. I love technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me just a second. I want to make sure that I have the right thing up. Okay, there we go. Okay, can everybody see that? Sure can. Okay, awesome. I'm just gonna like minimize all of you guys, except for Faith right there, there we go. So like I said, it's called the Campus Pride Index. It's not gonna let me do that. Okay, so what is the Campus Pride Index? The Campus Pride Index is a free online tool um, that allows prospective students like your guys' self, uh, for those that are thinking about, um, you know, after high school and stuff like that, um, uh, and their parents that are interested in, in higher education to search a database of LGBT friendly campuses. Um, so why use this? So there was this recent study done that actually came out um, in March that says that about 5.6% of American adults say that they identify within the LGBTQ spectrum. Um, so what else did the survey say? It said th that that was actually up 1.1% from the last survey, which was done in um, 2017. So that's actually, it, it doesn't seem like a huge um, jump, but it actually is. So what does that mean? That means about 13.3% of the United States population identifies as something other than straight, which is really interesting, I thought. Um, so how does that affect colleges that you might be interested in? It means that nearly 12% of all Gen Z adults identify as at least bisexual and, uh, and about 2% each identify as gay, lesbian, or transgender. Um, so what does that, college, does that mean for colleges and for you? So that means that um, based on what you can see here about one out of every six college students um, within the, the new generation that will be coming into college um, actually identifies as either LGBT um, or Q on that spectrum. So that's really um, a, a growing population that has uh, been on a steady, a steady incline. So what does the CPI look like? So I just wanted to take you guys to the, to the actual um, index itself. Um, I will also leave the link in the chat after I'm done. No, get out of here. So um, I picked Ithaca, Ithaca College just because it had a five point rating. Um, uh, so I just wanted to walk you through like what it looks like. So we're gonna go to Campus Pride Index. Um, and for this, I just would like a little bit um, participation. Anybody can like unmute their, um, Mike, and give me um, a college that they were thinking about, um, if you are thinking about college or not. It's up to you. You can drop it in the chat also. I'll yeah. Read it okay, Faith, thank you. Yeah, because I can't see anything. <laughs> I got you. So, and we'll try to stick to New York just because we are in New York. Where is it? Niagara University. NU. Okay, so let's see if NU is on the list. So like I said, um, I restricted this to just um, um, New York. So then we're going to try to do institution. Uh, no, we'll do uh, I, I think that's how you spell it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see if that pops up anything. So NU is actually not on the Campus Pride Index. So um, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but do we have a different suggestion? So these are all of the- Geneseo. Geneseo, oh, that's a big one. I think they are on here. Um, don't murder me if I'm wrong. You definitely will not do that, don't you worry. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So as I'm scrolling through, you can obviously, there's a lot of uh, schools on here. So Genesee is actually not part of that list either. Um, so let's see. I, I kind of want to stick with a state school because a lot of these are private. What about Brockport? That was at the bottom. 
Brockport is here, uh, right here. Yep. So Brockport, Brockport has a four out of five stars, which I would say, I think any of us would say was a pretty good ranking. So when you go on to that, um, it's gonna show you little facts about um, um, what it's like to go to for, uh, Brockport, sorry, not for down yet. Um, so it tells you like where it is, how big is the school, how much it might cost, stuff like that. Um, it also gives you LGBT student opportunities that they offer at, that are specific for Brockport. And then it also goes into how they went about rating Brockport as an overall school and listing it as LGBT friendly breakdown, um, which are based on eight different categories. So um, each school has their own different ways of doing it. There's also what they call, so that's what they call a report card, like how well are they at uh, responding to the needs of LGBT students when asked if there is something that is not available to them. So um, it's a really great, um, tool. Um, I won't go through everything because there is a lot to go through, but I will leave a, the, the link in um, the chat after I'm done. But I just wanted to get, uh, show you guys that. So to recap really quick, um, what exactly the Campus Pride Index does and what, what you need to be looking for, what I would say you need to be looking for when you're looking for a school um, after you graduate from um, high school are based on eight things. So you want to see if they have an LGBTQ policy um, uh, that surrounds inclusion. So um, are, do they have anti-discrimination policies? Do they, um, do they have a supportive and institutional commitment to the LGBT students? So do they have staff members that are exclusively for um, students um, that identify as LGBTQ? Um, do they have um, a center, something like that? Um, around the academic life, you wanna see if they have any LGBT friendly um, professors or courses that you can take that are specific to those types of areas. Um, student life is also a huge one that they rank on. Um, are there any clubs, groups? Um, is there a community? Is, this, is there a supportive staff? Stuff like that. Um, housing, do they have gender inclusive housing? Do they have housing that is specific for LGBT uh, students? Um, do they have, you know, um, dorms that um, are, you know, private for people of transgender, uh, that are transgender, excuse me, um, and, you know, so they have privacy and stuff like that. Um, campus safety is also a huge one. So like I said, do they have anti-discrimination policies? And do they have ways of reporting bias related incidences or incidences that we would consider hate crimes and stuff like that against um, people of the LGBTQ community? Um, another big one, because when you're going to a college, you really need um, um, a huge support around you, especially um, if you're going to a residential um, university where you're not necessarily gonna be around your family or friends that may be supportive um, of who you are. And when you're going to a college, that's not necessarily all the always the case because there are a large variety of people that go to a university. So you wanna make sure that they have support, uh, um, LGBT um, slash minority support centers or offices or um, places that you can go that are specific to your identity. And then the last one, which is a really big one, um, based off of the statistics that I showed you earlier is the recruitment and atten uh, retention efforts. So is the school actively trying to and supporting uh, recruitment efforts um, gauged at the LGBTQ community? And are they really trying to uh, build up the community that they have on the, their university? But with that, I would also stress, you wanna make sure, like I said, if they are um, trying to actively recruit LGBT students, do they also have that support system that I mentioned earlier? So I know that was really quick. Uh, quick. Like I said, um, I can do questions at the end, but I also wanna give the other presenters um, the ability to speak and stuff like that. So sorry if that was really quick. I do talk really fast, so. No, that was great. Yeah. All right, so the next person I'm just looking at on my screen is Giselle. So would you like to go next? Sure, that sounds perfect. Um, so I had come out in high school already. And when I was touring college, I knew I was queer. So I was looking for a queer college. Um, I toured like, I wanna say 10 colleges in New York and Virginia. Um, so I've toured like a lot of colleges. Um, and 
I think the best, like what I did a lot was um, the, you're given a tour guide on almost all tours and there's always a questions part. Ask the questions you wanna ask because they're gonna get answered. Like even though they're hired by the school and can only say certain things, if it's about safety, they're going to tell you the truth no matter what. Um, and if it's with queer individuals, I think there's such you there's such like worry about like, is this place gonna be inclusive? Ask a question. I asked, do y'all have any like format for drag here? Is there a way that you can do drag? And like, what is the queer life on campus like? And each school answered and if they don't answer that could be a little worrisome <laughs> so I think just ask the questions in that like your tour guide take them aside ask them or do this wonderful website that we saw but yeah that's basically my advice I'll go to someone else Chase you want to go Absolutely. Um, <laughs> my story is a little interesting. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I've been out as queer in terms of like sexuality since I was in like middle school. Um, so, you know, early bloomer, what can I say? <laughs> um, and literally the year before I went to college, I came out as non-binary. It was a lie. Um, it was it was a stepping stone for me, and it's not you know invalidating anybody who identifies as non-binary. It just turned out to be that for me. Um, so when I came to Fredonia, I was identifying as non-binary, and I did end up living with um, a girl I had gone to high school with. Um, and this is my my little word to the wise for people looking at Fredonia: um, when you go to do your housing. Um, and they ask you if you want suite style or corridor. If you go into a corridor, you will be placed with the sex you were assigned at birth. It doesn't matter if you're trans mask or whatever, you will be placed with the sex you're assigned at birth unless you go into the suite style um, and you can fill out um, the gender neutral housing application, which is found on um, the website. And if anybody needs that link or doesn't know where to find that, I can drop it um, in the chat. But yeah, so I went um, about two and a half months on campus and I said, oh, <laughs> uh oh, and then I started HRT in October um, and I ended up moving out of uh, the original hall that I was in um, the week before classes ended on campus. Um, so now I live in um, the building for first years, because technically, even though I'm a sophomore, I'm a first year <laughs> student. Um, I'm living in the hall that is kind of designated for us right now. And um, I'm actually in a suite of all trans guys, which is completely coincidental. Um, but it is, you know, a really great, Fredonia is really, really good with their housing. It's just, in terms of logistics, it's just the corridor style buildings. That's just kind of the way it works out. And when I came out, um, and started HRT, um, the RDs are so nice. <laughs> they asked me, they were like, do you want to move now or do you want to wait? And I asked if I could wait and they were like, that is okay. Like you can stay put as long as like, you know, the, your neighbors in the hall, like kind of know what's up. And like, I obviously wasn't passing. I still don't, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, it was really no big deal um, that I was living with a bunch of girls, <laughs> but you know, that's kind of the gist of my story. Awesome, thanks Chase. And then Jess. Okay, so my story is also a little unique like everyone else had mentioned. Um, I didn't identify as queer until a bit later in my college experience. But having a queer friendly environment was still important to me because I came from a really rural town that wasn't very accepting. Um, I'm also Latinx, so finding that intersection was important. And having that community around that was also important to me. So I think one of the first things I did was I looked at the different clubs and service opportunities they had to see if they aligned with things I was interested in and my, my values around that. Um, and then I also looked at, I think someone mentioned like classes within my majors and my minors to see if they offered like any insight into queer history or queer culture, just anything that involved queer people. So for context, I was a double minor with Latinx studies and women gender studies. 
And both of those minors are really helpful in terms of meeting professors that were queer themselves or queer friendly, um, and then finding other queer students because they just happen to be in those classes. I have notes, so I'm trying to make sure I get everything. Okay, so another thing that was important for me was because I'm from a rural area and some people in here might relate, the town I was in didn't have a lot of resources for queer people, but because I was going to a university that was in a bigger city, they did. And there was a more like visible community because I guess it was safer in those in those areas. So that was another thing I looked for was not only what was available at the university, but the surrounding area. And another thing that I thought was interesting that I, like I looked back on and I was like, oh, I guess it kind of did happen like that was without even trying, I just found a queer community at my university through getting involved. So I did a lot of um, like gender-based violence work, violence prevention work, um, looking at like sexual assault on campus or domestic violence in the community. And that there actually happened to be a lot of queer people also volunteering in those spaces. So that was really helpful in terms of finding just, I guess your squad, so, so to speak. Um, and that actually took me a while. I didn't find them until the spring of my sophomore year. So I guess that's that would be a big piece of advice I would have is, it's hard, but you just kind of have to be patient sometimes. I mean, if you don't think it's the right environment for you and you think it's dangerous, obviously, you know, like you should leave. But for me, it just took time. And then after that, it, it got a lot better once I found people that I could connect with. Awesome. Thanks. So through the four of you speaking, we have covered um, ways to identify how colleges are LGBTQ friendly, like looking at clubs and academic extracurriculars, looking at course um, listings to see if these are potentially majors, minors, just extra, like, not extra, electives, that's the word I'm looking for, electives you can take because a lot of majors require electives, and so you have to take them in a lot of dis different disciplines, and so that's a really good way to signify that your campus would be welcoming. Looking at your housing details, looking to make sure that there is an option for gender neutral housing, looking to find that just mentioned the intersection of multiple identities because no one person lives a single faceted life. We all have intersecting identities. And so making sure that your other identities aside from your queerness or your transness can be accommodated at your college campuses. And so is there any other ways that we haven't mentioned uh, the four of you, if you like have one off the top of your head that you said, oh, that is another way that I learned that my campus was safe, Tim? Yeah, you know, um, Jess had just mentioned something and I and I was thinking about it as it relates to, you know, Fredonia, but it could also relate to a lot of um, smaller schools. So Jace and Giselle slash Brad, um, know, uh, know this, oh, well, and Faith as well, um, about Fredonia. So Fredonia is actually a very small university. Um, it takes about, I would say like seven minutes with a good pace walking from one cam side campus to the other. No, like it's not it's it yeah it's not a huge campus um um but so our our university is very liberal um in in, in you know what it teaches how it is how, what the, the community that we draw in but the outside community so the local community is very conservative mm -hmm. so i think that's something that i, I would also want to like um urge people to look at too because um based off of personal experience um at here at Fredonia, the, the, our, our, our local community is not very accepting of, um, you know, a lot of, I, I put this very lightly in, in air quotes, progressive thinking, um, you know, so they, they don't accept a, a, um, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, people in their identity, such as, you know, um, LGBTQ people, Latinx people, um, you know, people, people of color as a whole, you know, um, so it's very hard um, to, so you have to make sure that to, do, does the community on campus outweigh the local community as well, because um, any college student will tell you that you will have interactions with people within the local community and you have to make sure that that's something that you feel comfortable with. Um, I know Fredoni has been trying really hard to bridge that gap um, between the, the, the campus and uh, Brad, don't laugh at me. <laughs> and uh, the, the campus community and the local community, we haven't been successful thus far. It's a work but in what, what's that? It's a work in progress. Yeah, it's a working progress. Will it ever get there? 
I'm going to say realistically, probably not, but that's just because of the area that we live in. Um, so when you are looking at colleges, make sure that, that that's a big thing too. Like, is it a big school? Is it a small school? Or is that something that you want? You know, um, we all see, you know, commercials all the time that say like, do you want to just be a number, you know, or do you want to be someone that's in a, like that your professor knows who you are, stuff like that. That's a huge thing. Like, do you want a big, a big school or a small school? And with those, those different size schools, you also have, um, a variety of like sizes of, of the local community. So I just wanted to point that out to you and thanks Jess for like jogging that inside me. Brian, what you got to say? And I think while it like, that is a good point and like the outside town, uh, if you have a strong enough college life itself, it's a dome mm -hmm. because since freshman year, I, and I'm a junior now, I don't think I've interacted with the outside of Fredonia since being here like I go to Walmart to maybe like three times a year to, to go and do something because that's what we have is a Walmart um so do look forward to that <laughs> um but I don't think that like it really matters because we have like campus is so liberal it's it's so liberal that at this point it's even hard to like when you go outside it's not like oh, be careful if you go outside it's more of a Oh, I forgot. Yeah, that's out there. Yeah. So it's not, I don't feel unsafe. Well, I think the odds of me going off campus are very slim and it's not something to worry about because we have so many things to do on campus. So really focused and make sure like if the outside is bad, make sure that the inside is comfortable and you are ready to stay for a while, which is not a bad thing. I enjoy Fedonia and I really like not leaving campus, but it's something you have to be aware of. Well, and we have an interesting duality with the presenters we have because the students who go to Fredonia and the student who goes to UB, I know this only from personal experience because I did go to both institutions. Fredonia is a liberal arts college and UB is a research-based college. They're two very different atmospheres, but both as we can see have a queer friendly aspect in those. So of course, when choosing your college, like your education is the thing you should put into account first and foremost, because that is what you're paying for and it's a lot to pay for. And so making sure that you're going to get the education you want based on the different colleges you're going to go to. If you want to go for a science-based educational career, Fredonia is potentially not your place because it's so heavily a liberal arts-based college. But also if you want to go for like art, maybe UB is not the place because it's a research-based college. That's not to say both places don't have those things and your fits based on your own personal experience. But you have both places, you have to weigh in that potentiality of having a queer friendly space because you can find queer friendly spaces within both of those places, but potentially you would feel more comfortable at a liberal arts college walking outside than maybe you would at a science-based college, but that's not to say that you can't because you absolutely can. So that's just also something to make sure you keep in mind. Then Another, oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. I was gonna say another thing I thought of for people who are considering starting like um, different hormone therapy or transitioning is just access to that. Cause I know where I did my undergrad um, had a big med school. So there were hospitals everywhere. There were so many doctor's offices everywhere and like gender therapy institutes. So that was just one thing I thought of. It, it might be harder to find that in a, in a rural area if that's something that people feel safe doing while they're at college. Fantastic point. Yeah, I think another thing too, um, because we're making this sound like, you know, uh, there's one or the other, like, and that's true, there is, um, to some extent, but um, Brad can attest, Jace, I don't know if you know me, or if you've heard my name on campus, probably not, to some extent, but Brad knows, um, I have been labeled, like, literally labeled by our school as, like, a student activist. Um, I want to encourage you guys that you can also, Faith, did you have your hand up? Sorry. No, I whoop whooped you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, just because of all the work that I have done um, in my spheres uh, to try to make um, Fredonia, Fredonia more um, inclusive and more welcoming for, um, you know, uh, people of color and for people um, that identify within the LGBT spectrum, because it's really hard sometimes, like, I, I will say like, yes, I go to Fredonia. Yes, 
there are worse places to go. Um, and I will acknowledge that. I will be the first person to acknowledge that. You know, I have lots of lots of professors that are very, very supportive um, um, and very like conscious, but there are also a lot of professors that are, aren't. Um, and so like I have, like I said, I've been labeled on our campus as a person that's very much an agitator of trying to make sure, make that more inclusive. So I want to uh, say that too, like if you're that type of person where, you know, you seem very dead set on a college that you want to go to and you think that it's going to be good for you as far as, right, because like Faith said, that first thing is your your education. You know, is this the place that I want to know where I know I'm going to be a, get a good education but not necessarily have the best, you know, social life? Make make that life for yourself like it, it, it's very possible you can very much do it um ask brad like we have a we have a pride alliance here um you know that it's very that brad is a part of jace i'm not sure if you are but um it's very you know we you you can find your niche wherever it is so like the campus community may not also you know be as supportive as you want it to, but there are groups within that community that will support you. And if you don't have that, you can also, you know, push for and make uh, and pressure people to make that type of environment as well. So I will always advocate for that. Jace, you have your hand up. Yes, um, I wanted to go back to uh, what Jess said about um, going on HRT, just to provide a little bit of perspective for anybody. I don't know if there is anybody out there who is trans um, or non-binary that's pursuing HRT um, and looking at um, a school in a more rural area. Um, to put a little perspective on this, um, I'm from Rochester, <laughs> so you know, that's a big, like, there's we have a really great gender clinic at Golisano. I don't know if anybody is from the Rochester area. Um, but coming to Fredonia, it's really, this is, so the way that I kind of have to do things, um, I have to have, um, telehealth appointments with my gender clinic from home, um, every like three months, which ends up being like, I'll have a telehealth visit on campus, um, and then I'll do an in-person visit when I go home. And, you know, it's like every other um cycle or every other um session I'll be in person um and then um all you have to do <laughs> is get your um HRT prescriptions um if you don't want to have your parents mail them to you um you can do what I did <laughs> uh, go behind the bags and <laughs> get it sent to Fredonia um and come out to them in a text message which was an awful awful move don't do that don't do that. Um, don't. It didn't end well. It's fine now, but it didn't go well. Um, but yeah, so there's also um, the process of HRT. Um, for those of you that are looking into it, um, you do have to get blood work done like every three months. Um, I don't know if it's the same way for going on estrogen that it is for testosterone, um, but there are um, labs up in Fredonia. Um, it's also... Um, the school of Fredonia is located between Fredonia the town and Dunkirk the town. Um, there are two labs in two different directions. It's the same company. They're two different places. It's really confusing. Um, you get the hang of it. You get the hang of it. That's what I've heard. I'm still not there yet, but that's what I've heard. Um, but yeah, and kind of for anybody that is from the Rochester area, which I don't know if there's any of you, to put the, the kind of Fredonia area in perspective, it's like I'm from Rochester, but I'm from Spencerport. Fredonia is the Spencerport of this area, <laughs> which nobody probably knows what I'm saying, but that's my perspective for you. So don't let it like, the fact that the community is like a little more, you know, conservative and a little less progressive, don't let it, you know, scare you away by any means. Like Brad said, you know, it's, if you can find your place within the campus and you don't have to go to the outside world, that's fine, but don't be afraid to step outside either. Yeah, agreed. Also, in our area, and I assume most of the conservative people are very, very, very old. So the odds of them actually causing a trouble, so slim. So like a majority of the conservative people who are around here, you're, you're fine. Just a good wind will keep you safe. Um, and additionally, I thought about this when you said tele um, work. Right now is a perfect time 
if you're trying to go in and look for colleges, especially looking for a queer community, because we can't do anything in person anymore. So if you find a school's Instagram page or you go on the school's website and find the school's like pride website or something, that is the ex direct way to find out what they are doing. Um, I know Pride Alliance here, our Instagram has been popping off the last year because that is the only way we can contact people. Everything's on Zoom. We are having our first in-person event kind of thing for the first time in a year soon. So you, everything's online. You can see it all. Meetings are all online. And if you guys want to like, I know we don't have a problem with this. And I don't think a lot of schools where a lot of things are online. Email the, or the pres president of the Pride Club and sneak in in our meeting. I'm sure people will be completely fine with you just because everything's so online and so in person, do some tours of clubs. That would be fun. That's where you get to see your community and you could find people to meet when you get to campus. Um, it, it, it's a very weird time. Hopefully we're almost done, but use this to your advantage and like go, go we all know how to Instagram stalk. Go Instagram stalk for your LGBTQ community. <laughs> Talking for activism, awesome. We love it. All right, so I wanna make sure that we save the last portion of this panel to have questions from y'all. So if you have any questions that don't mind my dog, he's running around. Um, if y'all have any questions for our panelists, um, you can feel free to put them in the chat box, raise your hand, unmute yourself, whatever tickles your fancy. Don't laugh at me, Tim. So Edward says, do trans people have to dorm in gender neutral places? Does the college even have to know that they're trans? Hello. Um, <laughs> I'm like, hi, it's my time. Go for it, Jason. <laughs> um, just gonna look at the chat so I don't like mess up your question. So trans people don't have to dorm in gender neutral spaces. Um, that's just what I personally chose to do as a person going kind of from like one type of building to the next. Um, from what I understand, um, from other people that have, you know, been out of the closet for longer than I have, um, it is a little more comfortable to live in gender neutral housing or, um, the suite style buildings at Fredonia. Um, the school doesn't necessarily have to know that you're trans, um, depending on, it's kind of like a yes, but also no, because if you do um have a different name than your legal name if you have a preferred name um you do have to like when i changed my name through the school since it's not technically my name legally um i did have to go and get a new id card printed i had to tell all my you know professors and like um the people i worked on campus um so i had to tell them like hey by the way a new name um new set of pronouns um work with me here you know um so the college doesn't necessarily have to know that you're trans but um if you do want to change your name if you do um if you do want to go on hrt um it is better to let the health center know um so you can have a place to safely get rid of your sharps and you know biohazard stuff um hopefully that answered your question okay <laughs> Tim's got i was just going to add to this faith just because um jace I'm not like stepping in you. Um, just because I've been on, um, I, I'm on a, a few committees of what Jason was talking about. So just from a little bit more of a background side, um, yeah, most colleges, um, which I don't, I don't agree with. Um, most colleges, when you're applying, do not ask you uh, um, like what your 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 gender identity or gender expression is. Um, or what your sexual orientation is, which I personally don't agree with. I think, um, you know, when you're going into a new community, that uh, that should be one of the first steps to try to put you intentionally in co communication with people that um, identify within the same community as you. Um, so for Don it's not just for Donia, but there are a lot of uh, universities that don't do that. Um, so like Jay said, you don't have to tell them, but being um, a resident assistant, which I was, so uh, what a res res resident assistant is or an RA, 
Jace, will, Jace knows this and so does Brad and I'm sure Faith and Jess. Um, they are one of the people that like helps over like oversee the building. If you let your RA know, um, they will work with you tirelessly. I know, cause I was there, I did the trainings and everything um, to, to try to make you feel more comfortable. Or if you're not necessarily comfortable with like going to the RD who is like the big boss of the building or even residence life, they can be that point of information and contact for you to make it a little bit easier because your RAs you see on a regular basis, whereas your RD and the head of residence life, you'll never see, you know? So um, I wanted to put that out there too. And, and like Jay said, um, we have a chosen name program um, here where you can change your first name, not legally, but um, where, you know, the school will address you as the name, your chosen name and not uh, the name that you were given at birth. Um, and just to go off that too, like not every school has that too. So if that's something that's huge to you, like I said um, earlier in my presentation, make sure they have um, institutional commitments that are tailored to your needs. So like if you need if you need a space where they're gonna acknowledge you um, as you are, right, and not what it legally says, then you need to make sure that they have those types of things as well, because not everybody has that, and they will not. Um, they will not acknowledge that for most cases. Um, up until a few years ago, we didn't have the chosen name program. So um, individuals like Jace wouldn't have been able to go and get a new, you know, Fred card with their, your, uh, their chosen name on it and stuff like that. It just wasn't a thing. It's a growing thing, but it's something if uh, you definitely have to keep out for. So that, yeah. But Jace, you did a great job answering that question. <laughs> All right, any other questions? How can I support a young person in looking for an LGBTQ friendly college? Abby, that's such a great question. Um, I mean, Giselle or Jess, I, if you guys want to speak on it. So apparently my dad knew I was queer before I even told him, which was really cool. But I, I'm sure we have all heard the, I knew, but well, when you come out, which is just a great thing. Um, my dad used the queer index that Tim talked about. My dad called schools behind my back to be like, do y'all have a pride club? Do y'all have a this? Found out about this last year. So it's not even something that I know to this day, but it's like, you, you can do the research before them and then like not even know like, hey, I wanna to tour this school. Mm, okay, that's a good choice. But I think we should tour this school. It's got your major, and I just got a good feeling about it. That good feeling is three hours of conversation on the phone. They don't need to know that. Cause, like, of course, if I would have heard my dad said I researched into your college, I would be like, no, then we're not going there. I don't want to go to a school that, like, so do a little bit of undercover work, do a little bit of spy work, and contact this dual I, a parent can get through I assume this is a parent or sibling or anything it, I this is coming from a place of love that place of love will get you a lot of places talking to a college faculty member um or if even if you lie and just yeah. tell them that you're interested in the school oh 100 percent. yeah just tell but them college, me. I colleges want, don't I, have a age gap or anything a peer mentor yes lie anything I, just Maybe let's not encourage a whole bunch of lying, but not too much lying. Just oh, I'm looking into your college right now. I would but love you to can hear finesse the system, and that's yeah. not even a lie because you are actually looking into the college. Right, you're just not looking into it for you. You don't have to be right. It's a small fib. It's 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 a version of the truth. Okay, it's not the truth, but a version of it. If this um, is the Abby, I think it is. I'm. A, I think you're Abby from Nax, which is why I think I recognize your name. But, um, so, um, yep, I thought so. So a great thing to do, like as a working person who like I've had youth come to me and be like, I'm wondering what colleges to look for. Uh, I've offered to go on college tours with some youth because they're recommended to bring an adult and they do not need to know who you are as an adult. You are a support system to that youth and whatever facility and way you are. So uh, I've definitely offered that. Um, yeah. 
I would also say like, if you know other people that are like in college, right? Mm -hmm. um, that are friends with people of, of um, a certain community, um, you know, um, especially if they like are like a perfect person, ask, ask that friend, right? Like if they can put them, put them in contact with this other person, they're, I know like I've done it like a trillion times. I've had random kids that I don't even know, like when I lived on campus, um, like come spend the night with me on campus, you know, they have to be 17 or 16. Um, but to, uh, to stay the night and like go to classes with me and shadow and stuff like that. And actually we, we at Fredonia have that type of program, um, which I was part of as well, but that's more geared towards, right? Like do, doing that uh, initial, uh, you know, um, outreach yourself um, would be great. Like putting them into contact with people that, that you know that are of the same uh, mind and same community um, is really important too. I would say that's a huge thing is definitely putting them with contact, especially if you're not that person or you don't know, find people for them, you know, or like face said, be very supportive and be like, I will go with you, you know, and like Brad said, do that research, get all those questions that you want, write them down. Cause uh, I used to be a tour guide as well. I've done it all. Um, you know, uh, they will answer the questions. As long as you have questions, they will answer them or, or we're not lying, but a version of the truth, calling them and having that list of questions for them and saying, like calling a missions office and being like, hey, like, you know, do you have these things or can you put me in contact with someone that does, which most likely goes to people like Brad who are part of that, that, that club or that group and, um, and being like, hey, I'm going to put you in contact with someone who's very interested. So I'll let Brad keep talking. That was a great segue. We yeah. have, um, intercultural weekend once a year towards choosing of finale time for colleges um and it's run by our intercultural club which is the entire like any minority club is put together into the multicultural club bsu asu latino uh La latino Latino Unidos. Unidos, um a ton of different clubs, including Pride, we put on a weekend long event where we have a fashion show, we have a carnival, we have, it runs to like two o'clock in the morning and it's open to everyone, I believe. And um, I would say it's, it's open to accepted students. Okay. Yeah. It's open to accepted students. Um, but I would, yeah, I, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. And they, I know every year, they especially ask they come into pride like three times during that time and they're like we need queer people to help them stay in rooms we need them to stay in rooms and almost everyone in pride is always like yeah i got a room come on in just come stay and it gets a lot of not only queer students but certain minority groups are all they're the ones who normally run these things so yeah, this is the shadowing program. Yes, the campus host program, Jace, I was going to say it. Um, yeah, like we're, it's, it is virtual now, but what it used to be is like, you would come take a tour with your um, family and then your family would dump you here basically. And uh, um, you would get a mentor um, who would uh, fall, like take you around their classes for a day uh, to the club meetings that you had, to show you where to um, like eat, who to talk to, stuff like that. So that's a huge thing. Um, and I know recently, because I helped work with them, um, is growing it to where, like Brad said, is reaching out to specific communities that people identify with to make it feel more comfortable because you don't want to put someone who doesn't, Fredonia is known for this, um, being one of those places because we are um, you know, a very liberal school, but a lot of uh, people that come to our school come from very like, you know, um, conservative places and don't necessarily um, know or have met a person who is trans or even gay. So like putting them, pairing um, like two people that just don't fit together, together, sometimes can be a great thing, right? Cause it's a learning thing, but also it's very uncomfortable because, you know, students coming here to learn themselves and they don't want to be teaching someone else, you know, about stuff. So. Um, I would say make sure like if they do have a, a campus uh, host program or a shadowing program that it's, um, you know, 
you can pick the person like it's tailored to a certain identity or something like that because that'll make the experience so much better for you that's actually um i'm a campus host right now so if anybody is a theater arts major please <laughs> i haven't gotten the chance to meet with anybody um so please i'm begging you <laughs> but they have changed it a little bit um i don't know if you're still involved with it tim but um, they have they've changed it a little bit um, in terms of the virtual campus host. Um, you will be matched with someone um, with your major. I don't know if you're a BFA. Uh, this is specifically for theater people. I don't know if you're a BFA, if you can be matched with someone because I'm a BA. Um, the difference is subtle, but <laughs> I didn't have to audition. That's the only difference. So I don't know if you could be uh, matched with me, but they will match you with someone in... Um, they try to find someone with your specific major, but they will give you at least someone in your department. So it's really nice. And we do just kind of like talk you through the process and talk about applying, auditioning, if you have to, um, and just other stuff about campus. And then the last little tidbit I had, which sparked after Tim said something, is my personal college experience. And the reason I did not want to be a panelist on this is because I do not identify as queer. I identify as an ally. I come from a very conservative background. I did not, I could maybe count on less than five fingers how many like queer people I knew before going to college. And I would have identified myself as a super supportive, awesome person who was really with it all and definitely knowledgeable. And then I got to college and I was like, I don't know anything about anyone because who am I? My only like oppressed identity is that I identify as a woman. And so that, really I've lived a blindly privileged life. And so going to college is really a big culture shock in that kind of experience. And that's not to say to go to a university. I started at a community college. I went to JCC for my first year and a half. And so it doesn't matter like the size of the university, the type of university, you will learn something from coming from a different background and then going to college because you're one off on your own. And then second, you're being taken seriously as an adult now. And so you meet a whole host of different people. And I found like a love for like LGBTQ history and queer identities. And it was a community that I didn't know anything about, but I was super into using all of my privilege to be an advocate for the community, be a good ally. And so being an ally, but also wanting to find a space that is like LGBTQ friendly, but not just that, like people of color friendly, um, all of your different marginalized and intersecting identities, making sure that if you want to be a good ally to any of those types of identities, anybody who is a minority identity, you should put yourself in those spaces and then use your privilege for good, for helping raise their voices, for making their lives easier, for making sure that you learn just more about other people than the identities that you attain in yourself. And so that's also something because I know that we open this conference to not only queer people, but allies as well. And so it's definitely something to keep in mind. For sure. All right. And we did run a little over. So if anybody wants to draw like a last minute question in, totally feel free. Um, awesome. Thanks. I'm super glad you're all enjoying this. And I really hope this helps because looking for a college is one of the more stressful experiences of your high school career. And I definitely know it's something that they're encouraging younger and younger in your high school experience. And so any ways that you could, I hope that it was helpful to hear from college students, from past college students, just the differentiating experiences and how that intersects with your queerness and transness. And I just hope to help. So I don't believe we have any more questions. Would our presenters like to say any final notes while I pet my dog, cause he's needy? Oh, um, I'm just going to put my email um, in the chat. And if anybody has like any questions about Fredonia or anything really related to college, you feel free to email me. I use it like a text message. Um, it's like, you know, my second source of communication other than texting. Um, Tim's also going to be Gliss's intern next semester. So y'all cool. need Tim. I got, I got him for you. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So yeah, email me if you have any questions or if you have any questions related to Brad, you can email uh, me and send them on to Brad or, you know, we, we all talk. So it's, I'll give it's, you my email. I'm not afraid. Okay. Of okay. You're not afraid. <laughs> 
All yeah. Right, Michelle, this was awesome. Thank you so much to our panelists for coming. I really appreciate the time and effort y'all put into this and for bearing with me for the various emails and coming to talk to our GSA members. Yeah, of course. And then thanks for my GSA advisors and my GSA members and Abby from Nax for coming and hanging out. I appreciate all of y'all as well. And this video will be up on our YouTube channel in the sometime near future. I love that. Time to.